Ocala's information station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Twenty-five minutes uh, before eleven o'clock. I think you're going to love this next interview. Wait till you hear about this. I'm going to start off with something really, really trivial and superficial. And it's when I was working in a factory. I told the story just yesterday, as a matter of fact. I worked in a factory and I was making um, something. I didn't know what I was making. It was a, it was a sheet metal factory, and I pushed a button and the machine made something and. It, I made sure it was good and d- did another one all day long. <laughs> and one day I said, "What am I? What am I making?" And uh, the boss said, "Oh, you're making a part that will be part of a windshield frame for a jeep that will be sent to the army." I said, "Oh, wow!" All of a sudden, I had more pride in what I was doing. All of a sudden, I knew what I was doing. I knew what it was about. <clears throat> Can you imagine? And, uh, and I'm sure many of you have being in a war as a soldier and not really knowing what you're fighting for. I think you think that's got to be one of the first things that a, a commanding officer must have to convey to his troops is what you're fighting for. Yeah. And at the beginning of this country, they knew they were fighting for liberty. Mm-hmm. So it was really a passionate thing. Our next guest makes that point so clear. Our next guest is a hero himself. I mean, in the literal word, hero. Uh, he is Patrick K. O'Donnell. He wrote this amazing book called Washington's Immortals, the untold story of an elite regiment who changed the course of the revolution. If you don't mind me bragging just a little bit before I turn up your microphone, uh, Patrick, um, he fought in some of America's most intense urban combat since Vietnam. He was the only military historian in the Marine Rifle Platoon during the Battle of Fallujah. He uh, ambushed multiple times by the precursor to ISIS. He carried, hear this part, He carried a mortally wounded Marine out of a firefight. You stand up and we salute this man. Yes, we do. Very much so. Uh, Patrick K. O'Donnell, you've got so many more credentials here, but I wanted the listeners to hear that you've contributed to the History Channel, Fox News, Discovery. Uh, You've contributed to prominent national publications, and it's such an honor to have you on our show. You even contributed to DreamWorks for some... uh, the, The Band of Brothers. So many of you know that show. Uh, good morning, Patrick. How are you? Good morning, Larry. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. My goodness, what you've been through, and, and you, you spell out the, you spell out so many different things in this book. Um, where are you calling from, by the way? I'm in Winchester, Virginia today. It seems like a good place for a guy who's done. <laughs> yeah. Especially considering there's a lot of Civil War history here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which is where I'm probably headed after. After, in around, after around noon o'clock, noon uh, today. But, you, you know, you mentioned the fact that I was a combat historian in the Battle of Fallujah, and serendipitously, that's exactly how Washington's Immortals was sort of, I stumbled across the story. In two, about six years ago, the commanding officer of, of 3-1, Willie Buell, who I'm pretty good friends with, and, and I mean, when you're in battle with Marines, you form a bond of friendship that just lasts forever. And, you know, as you mentioned, I was in some very uh, difficult firefights. But anyways, the uh, Colonel Buell asked me, we were both up in New York, would you like to go to the Met one day? And I said, no, sir, how about we do, how about we tour the Battle of Brooklyn? <laughs> and that's really kind of a special thing when you're with somebody that was in battle with you. And I had spent weeks researching it, and we, we began at a place called Greenwood Cemetery, where, interestingly enough, in 1776, August 1776, the Battle of, of, of Long Island or Brooklyn begins in a watermelon patch of all places outside of the, now the gates of, of Greenwood Cemetery, where the British scouts kind of like stumbled upon these watermelons and they, they hit the American pickets that were there. And this touches off the this incredible battle. And the book is about the Maryland Regiment that plays a part in that battle that they were America's Spartans. This is an American Thermopylae. They literally fought thousands of British and Hessian forces to allow 
the American army to escape back to the entrenchments in Harlem Heights, and I'm sorry, in Brooklyn Heights, at a stone house. And the colonel and I walked the cemetery, the hills there where the, the American lines were, and then we went sort of back in and around these alleys in Brooklyn, found this old stone house where these men charged several times into a house that was occupied by Cornwallis, and nearly to a man, 400 men were nearly killed or captured. It's an epic story where these men sacrificed their lives for the birth of this country. And one, one person said this was an hour that they bought for us with their blood more precious to our liberty than any other. And what I found was absolutely striking. The colonel and I found a rusted old sign hanging from the Michael Raleigh American Legion post that said, here lie 256 Continental soldiers. My goodness. Somewhere in that area in the lot next to it or under a paved street are the bodies of these men. Wow. They've never been found. I dedicated myself for six years to finding this story. This is the first Band of Brothers treatment. Washington Immortal is the first Band of Brothers treatment of the American Revolution, and it tells their complete story beginning in a tavern in 1776 where men of honor, family, and fortune, the richest men in Baltimore, formed the first independent company which later became the regiment that fought here, and then also some of the great regiments of the war through the entire American Revolution. This is their story from the beginning of the Revolution all the way through Yorktown and into 1783. Wow, that is so fascinating. I, I grew up in the area you're talking about, and I, you know, I remember, here's the thing, and this is probably true for most of us, you, you go through your life, and this is not just a New York thing. This is all over this country. You'll see a road marker, like a, a metal sign, and it says on this site, and you read the thing, you know, and you take a picture of it. You say, I'll, read the, I'll, re I'll finish reading it later on. And you never finish reading it. And you never really absorb what, what it was, what it means. And I, and I can remember, as crowded as New York is now, seeing these things and wondering, I wonder how the, it looked the, back then. Of course, I, I can imagine it pretty, pretty easy because I live in a rural area now. It probably looks just like this. Mm -hmm. You know, but but it, it is it is amazing how much those little signs really represent. They represent huge, huge stories and, and hundreds of people. That's what Washington's Immortals is all about. It's about the stories. It's cinematically told. Do you feel like I mean this is the Wall Street Journal gave it an amazing review saying it was a it was combat writing at its best last week. It's been the number one book on Amazon for the American Revolution for three weeks in a row and it's one of the top selling books in history in the world. It puts you in the boots of these men. And I follow the main characters of the Maryland line throughout the entire war. And it's it's their story. It's very personal. It's cinematic. It's not like a textbook. It's a it's a story of the American Revolution that most people have no clue. This is eight long bloody years of war that we barely won against one of the greatest armies in the world. And these men were there, and I mean, it, it's incredible. In one two and a half year period, Larry, many of the men in the Maryland line marched 4,600 miles all throughout the South. My goodness. Through, barefoot, and with no clothing. Many of these men were naked. They just had their cartridge boxes and muskets, and then they were fighting the whole time in places like um, cow pens and Guilford Courthouse, which just celebrated its 235th anniversary, all throughout the, the South, near Utah Springs, near Charles, Charleston. I mean, it's it's an amazing story that tell you this. Washington's Immortals tells the story of the entire revolution through the eyes of these men. I, I, if you don't mind, go go to the part of my intro where I I was trying to explain that you help us understand what got into their spirit to make them want to do this? I, I used the word liberty. I think you used the word liberty. I mean, it, it, what, are we, what are we motivated by? It's not money. These men that began the, um, the Maryland line were some of the richest men in Baltimore. They put their entire fortunes on the line. Just think of kind of like a Bill Gates figure for the, the period throwing the entire fortune, it, it basically letting the business go and joining the army, uh, and then funding the entire operation yourself. 
going into debt in most cases, and then if you were lucky, you survived. That's the story of these men. Extreme mm. sacrifice, but it wasn't all the, It wasn't only the um, the wealthiest men in Baltimore. It became um, an integrated unit of classes, rich and poor, as well as race. This unit had um, seven to nine percent were free African Americans that fought for the for for this country. And uh, you know, this is something that would not take place again until the late 1940s in this country. And I learned about Morgan, and it was so powerful when uh, one of the fellows had to raise his shirt to show the battle scars to say, yeah, this person is, is you know, we should follow this person. Uh, Daniel Morgan, it, this book captures all of the leaders of the American Revolution, from the American side as well as the British side. But Daniel Morgan, who is incidentally and then ironically from Winchester, Virginia had a, a several um, battalions of riflemen who were expert crack shots but Morgan's sort of comes into play at a place called Cowpens in South Carolina and Morgan is is tasked with taking a small group uh, an army group basically and he has to face down one of the great adversaries in the American Revolution, a guy by the name of Bannister Tarleton, who's brutally ruthless. But Morgan has this incredible leadership style. During the French and Indian War, Morgan was had punched a British officer and then was severely punished for it and nearly killed. He was lashed with a bullwhip 400 times. God. His back was turned into a piece of leather that was scarred so heavily. And right before the Battle of Cowpens, according to legend, he went in front of everybody, in front of the, 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 the um, campfires before Cowpens, and he said, your, your, your lives, your families, everything is on the line. And it, one of his aides pulled up his shirt, and sh he showed his back, which had been so badly scarred. And he sort of joked, he said, you know, the, I'm a creditor to the crown. They they whipped me 399 times, and I still owe them one one lash. <laughs> and he, and he was he was ready, and he he creates the Battle of Cowpens is an epic American victory. You know, some people may have seen parts of it. You know, that was reenacted in the movie The Patriot. This is where the the front line the the um, the men that aren't necessarily very reliable, the militia that comes and goes, they're told to fire two shots, aim for the men with the epaulets. This is the British soldiers that are charging them. And then retreat. And they retreat back towards the Marylanders, the Continental Line, which are hidden behind a, um, a small hill. And as the British come full on, the, the militia retreat, and they think it's a, a repeat of what's known as the, like the Battle of Camden, which occurred earlier, where the American army was destroyed. They charge forward into the Continental Line, and they're met with like a withering fire. Many of them are drop, drop. And then it's sort of an interesting part of history. An order is misrepresented or misunderstood. And some of the Marylanders and the, and the other Continental soldiers, these are the, the seasoned troops in Washington's army, Washington's shock troops, accidentally start to retreat. So they show their backs. And it's a misunderstood order. They were supposed to wheel right instead of retreat. But the British think that they're full on retreating. They charge. The militia then shows up along with William Washington's horse, and they surround this small British army under Bannister Tarleton wow, wow. and capture many of them. It's an epic, epic victory. Uh, let's take a little break, and we'll be right back. Again, the book is called Washington's Immortals. Patrick K. O'Donnell is our guest, and uh, what a story he has of his own as well. We'll take a little break and continue with this on the other side. This is WOCA Ocala. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For Thursday, clouds add limited sunshine with a high of 80 across the coastal areas to about 87 inland. Partly cloudy and mild Thursday night, low 61 inland, 67 along the coast. For Friday, mostly cloudy with a shower or thunderstorm around, mainly in the afternoon, the high 80 to 84. And on Saturday, plenty of clouds along with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, high 78 to 82. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Are you in
in need of custom screen printing, embroidery, or promotional items? Then look no further and come visit the brand new Legacy Team Sales. LTS is conveniently located off 17th Street next to Armstrong Homes in beautiful Ocala. We offer the best prices and highest quality products for your company, team, school, or nonprofit. Whether looking for screen printed shirts, embroidered polos, or travel team uniforms, you'll be sure to find it at Legacy Team Sales. Come visit our new 27,000 square foot facility. Our friendly and knowledgeable sales staff will assist you in every part of your custom purchase. LTS carries the hottest brands in the industry like Under Armour, Russell, Mizuno, Asics, Badger Sports, Gildan, Pacific, Ogeo, and many more. At LTS, screen printing embroidery is done in-house and we guarantee customer satisfaction. Stop by, give us a call, or check us out on the web at shoplts.com. Remember the name, LTS. Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. All right, nine minutes left in this interview, and uh, you are never going to even scratch the surface uh, with this interview in a, in a short radio interview, I should say. Patrick K. O'Donnell has everything in the book called Washington's Immortals, and, and I really do appreciate the way you write. I, I guess I'm more... I, I was never a good student in, in textbook learning when it came to history, um, so I, th I think your book will help out the, the, the reluctant history student as well as the, the serious history student. Uh, the the everybody that I, uh, many compliments that I've received is that this is this book is cinematic. It puts you there. It puts you in the boots of these men as they march through some of the greatest battles of the American Revolution. That's what makes Washington's Immortals unique compared to other other. Uh, this is the first Band of Brothers type treatment of the American Revolution. Can I, can I ask a question that might sound that's out of left field, and, and, and I'm just not sure. I'm just, I was looking through the book, and one of the maps shows Manhattan and Brooklyn, that whole area, and there's an arrow pointing specifically to Trinity Church. I'm pretty sure that's the church down by the World Trade Center. It's that old church with that old it cemetery. It is. Yeah, okay. Yes. And, uh, and we went there, Robin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we did. So, so t how, does, what, how does that play a role in this story, or does it? It's just it's I, I added it. It doesn't have a large role. Um, it, it's just I wanted to put sort of a, a marker that had that's something that has survived almost two, you know, two almost two hundred seventy years. Right, right. The people have passed maybe. Yeah, the, the headstones there. When you look at the headstones, you say, "Wow, look at mm -hmm. this." So, so when, when the the people you don't see who who died underneath that that. Uh, what do you call it? a plaque that you saw? You know the the two the the, the men who died that were buried there. Mm -hmm. Their stories are in this book. Did did any of them live to see um, the fruit of their efforts? Did any of them survive the war to that yes. point? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, one of the men that's the main character of this book is the man that actually started it all. Mordecai Gift. He's one of about nine men in a small group that escapes along with a guy by the name of Nathaniel Ramsey. And Ramsey's quite an interesting character. He's, uh, you know, a lawyer from Cecil County, Maryland. He's, in, he's about 34 at the time. He's the, one of the old men in the unit. And what's, what's interesting about him is that his wife is so dedicated that she actually accompanies these men on their, on their, on their movement through the, Amer through the Americas. And they have a small carriage, and she 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 follows the army. She's known as a camp follower. And Ramsey's story is is quite epic. I mean, he survives there along with Gist and and several other men. He's so tall. He's like about six feet tall because they had to cross a mill pond where the stone house is at. And they many of the men can't swim. They drown in that mm -hmm. pond. Mm -hmm. And then many you know he's he's lucky because he's so tall. He's able to make it across. But his claim to fame is is later on in a place called the Battle of Mammoth where the American army is attacking the British army, which is retreating towards New York. They're leaving Philadelphia. And Ramsey, this is, this is so typical of this unit. They are constantly in the inflection points of battle where it makes the difference between victory and defeat. 
the army attacks the British army, which then repulses that attack, and they, they put the British put their elite units in the back, and it's it's a disaster. They're they're retreating quickly, and Charles Lee, who's the commander of the American army, is is basically in full retreat. And Washington meets him on the field of battle and starts to swear. He literally. The, the account that's given by Lafayette is that the leaves on the trees actually shook because Washington was swearing at Lee so much. <laughs> and Washington had never, never swore. He had this mm-hmm. like incredible, you know, demeanor. Oh, wow. And, and stoicism. And it's at this point that Washington meets Nathaniel Ramsey, who has a regiment of Marylanders, and says, can you hold the British back while I bring up the rest of the army? And, and Ramsey and his men charge into the vortex of battle. And, you know, they hold the British long enough so that Washington, who's an incredible commander in chief, this is a man that doesn't lead from behind. He leads from the front. He brings the entire army up, and they're able to clash. But Ramsey, many of his men are killed in this action, um, this holding action. And Ramsey is a sort of a microcosm of the battle, which is like 100 degrees out. Men are just dropping because of sunstroke, etc. Ramsey meets his counterpart, who's, an, who's a British officer, and he's unhorsed in the battle, um, in, this, in a saber battle. And he's about to be killed by this British officer, and Ramsey shows his Masonic ring, according to legend. Many of the men in the Maryland line were, were extremely powerful Freemasons. In the ring, grants him quarter, and they are oh, taken off wow. into captivity. Oh and my he's, goodness! Wow. Yeah, he's he's taken off into captivity, and what's striking is Jenny Ramsey, who's Mrs. You know his his wife. She's so dedicated and loving that she goes with him into captivity, and they they basically they live in New York City uh, through the war. Mm. Many of the men, Ramsey was so wealthy, they were able to buy their quarters. They were able to buy a house in New York City. Most of the men of the Maryland line, if you were captured, you went on a concentration ship, basically, known as a hell ship, in New York Harbor, and you were starved to death. Oh. Wow. And up to 18,000 Americans died on these ships. Wow. Wow. In New York Harbor. Wow. So, mm-hmm. okay, and, and when we call Battery Park, Battery Park, it's, it's because that was a, a that was a, a protective area, right? That was where the cannons were and all that? That's one place. And now, this, the, the, there's actually a ship, there's actually a memorial to the men that died on those hell ships in Green Park. It's a giant, like, column that is dedicated to the thousands of men that were starved to death by the British. And, you know, I mean, they were, most of the time, they weren't fed at all. And then their bodies were just, like, thrown overboard like a pile of trash. And the bones still, to this day, sometimes wash up. Oh. Wow! Wow! Yeah. All right. I um, would love to keep this book, but I'm not going to. I'm going to give it away. It's a hardcover. It's gigantic. You've got a huge reference list in the back. Um, Over a thousand sources. Wow! It's an emotional read. You, yeah, you've got diaries. You've got uh, gosh, all kinds of references in here. Um, the book sells for twenty-eight dollars, according to the Inside Flap. I have it here. It's for free if you want it. The one that I have. Call me six two two nine six two two, and it's yours. The rest of us have to buy it on our own, and uh, that includes me. Patrick, uh, do you have a website of your own, first of all? I do. It's patrickkodonnell.com. And then anybody who wants to get a feel for this book, go to Amazon. All the reviews, like the Wall Street Journal, etc. You can read sample chapters and reviews and really get a, a feel for what Washington's Immortals is all about on Amazon.com, or it's right in the front of the store at Barnes & Noble. Wow, there's a lot of calls coming in for the free one. Let me take one of these, and... I can only give away one. The rest of us have to go buy it. You you will get your money's worth, though. This is an awesome book. Good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Uh, Ken. Ken, do you know where we are? Yes. Okay. What is the first letter of your last name, Ken? S. Smith. Okay. And you know we're in the uh, the mall, right? Yeah. Okay. You got it, Ken. It'll be waiting for you. I think he's gone. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Patrick. We stand and salute you for your service and and everything you've done. My gosh, thank you for taking this much time to spend with us. I mean, we have a a little show in Ocala, Florida, but we have an awesome audience, and I I know that they appreciated this. Hey, hey, I've loved it, too. It's been very interactive. Your your, your questions have been great. I'd love to do it again. I mean, this is a a deep book about eight years of war that, you know, about our our founding. You know, as, as all the turmoil around us, 
in the elections, et cetera, people right. are looking back. Right, absolutely. I, I can see that, too. Uh, Washington's Immortals, we've got to go. This is WOCA Ocala. Thank you so much, Patrick O'Donnell. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. The Secretary of State makes a declaration about ISIS. Daesh is responsible for genocide against groups in areas under its control, including Yazidis, Christians, and Shia Muslims. John Kerry saying that while the naming of crimes is important, stopping them is essential. There's new information out on the Army Sergeant at the center of a controversial prisoner swap in Afghanistan. Bo Bergdahl's attorneys released a document from July that shows an Army sanitation board evaluation concluded that Bergdahl suffered from a personality disorder when he left his post in Afghanistan in 2009. A Mayo Clinic website says people with this disorder have trouble interpreting social cues and can develop significant mistrust of others. The Army sergeant is facing a court-martial on charges of desertion and misbehavior before the enemy. Fox Radio's Tanya J. Powers.